Well, hello folks, this is Jamil Sir for Construct Reviews. We are here at the headquarters of the Robert Companies in Phoenix, Arizona with Freddie Blish. Freddie, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, welcome, Jamil. Good to see you again. Hey, well, today we're going to talk about handguns. Yes, something that Robar knows a little bit about. Uh, our founder, Robbie Barkman, uh, in 1977, when he immigrated to the United States from South Africa, came from a country that was under embargo, so they had to be very resourceful and you know do a lot of uh, maintenance and, and fixing of their own guns because they weren't able to get parts from you know the countries that they had purchased them from. So uh, after he'd immigrated here, uh, he uh, was instructing a gun site and he found himself behind the line often fixing people's pistols uh, because at that time there wasn't a lot of gunsmiths that were fixing you know pistols the way they should be um, and the way we have them now. Mm -hmm. And so 1983 he became the first full-time gunsmith at Gunsight and that's hence became Robar and he started that. So we cut our teeth on uh, you know 1911s and Browning High Powers. So what we did a few years back was start our own line of signature 1911s. And uh, what led, that, led us to that was uh, Scotty Reitz with his signature pistol. Scotty Reitz is uh, one of the early members of LAPD Metro D platoon or LAPD SWAT. And uh, he has his own company in California, uh, north of Los Angeles uh, called Eagle's Nest. Uh, that's not the name of his company, but that's where he trains at. And so ITTS is his company, and so we build uh, custom 1911s per Scotty's uh, specifications off of customer-supplied handguns, whether they be Kimber or Colt or Springfield Armory. And the reason for that, most of Scotty's customers are in California, and they have to be California-compliant handguns. Uh, someone outside of California would want one, and then I don't worry about that compliance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for those in California, I have to. Uh, but we've got our RC-1911 CQB, these are our signature guns that we build off of our own uh, frames and slides that are uh, uh, made for us out of steel forgings. Um, so we've got RC-1911, uh, which is really what I like to say is what the Marine Corps M45 should have been. There were some features on there that they kind of, you know, went cheap on, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great gun. I own one. I think the M45A1 uh, is a great gun one of the better ones that Colts produced in recent years. Uh, it's just, they could have gone a little bit further, but okay. they built what was spec to them by the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then we have our RC-1911 uh, C or Commander, uh, and uh, this is a nice pistol. It has NP3 plating here on the frame and all the uh, internal parts, and then our Rogue Guard, Satin Rogue Guard finish on the slide. And this makes for a very nice carry gun. Mm -hmm. And it's got our proprietary texturing, or actually stippling, uh, that we do to the uh, front strap, the front strap and the back strap. Uh, awesome. And then these two pistols back here are a signature line that we did for the Jeff Cooper Legacy Foundation. This is the serious pistol, the TSP. So this is the RC-1911 TSP. This is based on a article that Jeff Cooper wrote for Guns and Ammo in August of 1986. And what it was was this was a 1911 that had just the features that you needed on a handgun and, you know, for serious work. He, Jeff felt that, he always called this, he didn't call it a beaver tail, he called it a duck bill mm -hmm. or a duck tail. And while, you know, he was okay with the duck tail, didn't think it was a necessary feature, but it's hard to find really a good grip safety that would be close to what Jeff was specking at the time, and so we went with a, just a good quality, uh, you know, Ed Brown, uh, memory groove, uh, grip safety. But then everything else on this is exactly how Jeff specced it. Then we have the Jeff Cooper pistol, the, the RC-1911 JCP. Again, we're NP3 on the frame and all the parts, satin row guard on the slide, his embossed uh, logo, as we, we gold fill, and the thing about it is the thumb safety, it's a low mount thumb safety that Robbie Barkman actually designed and uh, would, would manufacture for those people who want the low thumb mount safeties. Mm -hmm. And so that is a feature that uh, people like, depends on the size of their hand. If they have smaller hands, they like that, that low mount thumb safety. Some of it is also a carryover from the days of when uh, shooters would 
came, were transitioning from revolvers to 1911s, and they would cross their thumb over like this. Um, and so if your thumb is riding high, like on a traditional thumb safety, you can't do that. When you're running low, it allowed them to do that. Okay. So they get a better grip. So there's that uh, aspect of kind of why that even came into existence. And it also had a lanyard loop, which Jeff Cooper uh, specified. He always uh, liked the fact that uh, his 1911s had a lanyard loop. But what we've done is instead of having it protruding from the uh, magazine uh, uh, mainspring housing, it is internal to it, so now it's much more uh, protected and rugged because the metal ones that protrude can often get bent. Yep. So that was why we, we did that. Um, That's the, awesome. The other thing after that, we kind of transitioned into Glocks. People don't realize that in around 1987, Scottsdale PD came to us. Uh, Rick Furr said, hey, got some officers with small hands, can't get them around a Glock 17 frame. We, he said, what can you do? And we did it. So we were the first to do a grip reduction, and then we began texturing. And in this, we've added a beaver tail right here, which looks like it came from the factory that way. And uh, all of that is done by hand. We don't do stippling. We actually do texturing. Mm -hmm. Stippling is a, you know, someone takes a hot iron and keeps poking holes mm -hmm. like that. And there are a few, and I, I really can count two fingers, uh, those people who do texturing, uh, that are stippling that I would recommend. Mm -hmm. um, every, all the others, we get their work and we fix it with our texturing. Um, we've got a nice high grip here so you can get that finger up higher on the gun. Uh, and the beaver tail is really good for people with big paws. Mm -hmm. You've got big meaty paws and you're getting slide bit from the Glock, hey, send it to us, we can put that, that beaver tail on there. If you'll notice, we've got our MP3, of course, on the slide on that one. Uh, this one is the signature pistol we do for Jeff Gonzalez. This is the Tricon, and uh, this is the Tricon Mod 1, where we don't do a grip reduction, but we do texture it, and then we do the high grip mod, and then also on this side here, we're scalloping around the magazine release so you can get a good full depression. Mm -hmm. And then we're putting our Poly T2 gunmetal gray finish on the slide with MP3 uh, plated internals. We do a trigger job. Uh, put a minus connector in it that's also plated with MP3, uh, and also then we put the uh, Trijicon HD sights on there, and it's got a KKM barrel in it. Really nice pistol. Uh, and it's, a, it's a been a great project that we've been doing with Trident Concepts. Uh, I've got a, another uh, Gen 4 Glock 19 here where we uh, did the beaver tail, grip cut, removed the finger grooves, put an RMR on it, and uh, also, you get your backup iron sights, MP3 on the internals, another really nice work gun. Um, here is a Glock 45, and we've added a beaver tail, but I want you to put your hand on that frame. I mean, that it, it, it takes a frame that feels like you got a two by four in your hand and makes it, it, makes feel, it feel really like, comfortable. Really comfortable. And of course, if, you, if your customers wanted to, you, they could remove the we can finger remove grips. the finger grips, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I don't, they don't bother me here, but normally finger yes. grips from Glocks are sort of like a, yep. an afterthought that should have never it, happened. It's an applied taste. Some people like them. Uh, I, I can, I'm ambivalent. I can go either way, but I actually, on all my Glocks, I've had the finger grooves removed. Mm -hmm. I prefer my fingers to go where I, my hand thinks you should go by someone else's hand. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. And this is a wonderful pistol. So you, I'm yeah. going to have to bring one of my Glock frames out here. Yeah and we'll take them right off, that's not a problem. The other thing that on this particular one, you'll notice these half moon cuts. This was a suggestion by Louis Auerbach. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that was if you were, had, if the base pad had fallen off, which I've seen it happen uh, you know, in pistol competitions, they've got a big base pad on there and it falls off and then all the rounds found in the mag tube is still stuck in there. Well, now you can get in there to rip it out. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, so that was a, a really good uh, suggestion and feature for that. Um, what people don't realize is that we don't just do Glocks, we do all polymer framed uh, pistols. We've got a uh, Springfield XD here uh, that we've textured and we've added a beaver tail. And the other thing on this one, uh, you know, I'd like to have you just dry fire that and tell people what you think about that trigger. And that is clean. Yeah. As you know, that one of the big failure points on an XD is the trigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do uh, a really great trigger job on the XDs and it just cleans them up. Yeah, this is great. It's a great trigger pull. Yeah. Good for uh, personal defense and competition if Absolutely. you wanted to. Yeah. It's great. And what, know, what do we have here? We, we have got a, a car. We got a car, nine. We actually were approached by car about 
four years ago, five years ago to do a kind of an upscale model and the economy kind of went south and then uh, we never really moved forward with it. But yeah, there's a lot of custom features that we can do on cars from the, you know, texturing the grip to doing uh, trigger jobs and, and, and uh, you know, plating the, or metal finishing the slide and- And the internals. And the internals, yeah. Awesome. And we've got a, uh, another, another XD there, one of the nines. Same thing, we've textured that one. Uh, it, and uh, so. And of course, a Walther. The Walther PPK. Again, we. This is PPQ, the big the one. PPQ, yeah. This thing is gigantic. Yeah. And if you didn't work on this grip, this thing would have been even bigger. Absolutely. So this is a great improvement. Yep. And what do I see back there? We see a well, Beretta and a well, revolver. What we have is we've got a Beretta 92A1, uh, and this is a great gun. We went in, removed all, uh, people may not realize that if you haven't touched a Beretta in a while, uh, they've actually replaced a lot of parts that used to be steel aluminum with plastic. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we remove all of those plastic parts, we replace the trigger, the, the thumb safety, uh, the um, lanyard loop, uh, the magazine release. We just take all of those polymer parts out, replace them with steel or aluminum, you know, where required. And then we go through, we do an amazing trigger job on this, as well as, you know, we've coated this with our uh, Poly T2, but we do it with a row guard. Uh, we can do it uh, with our new Armalu. We've actually done that with our new Armalu. We can even cut crown the barrel flush with the slide, mm -hmm. which looks really sharp, looks very nice. Um, and then, uh, you know, again, this trigger job, I can't, you know, compliment my gunsmiths enough. I want you to try that double action trigger job. Wow, that's clean and crisp and smooth. Yes. Just like that revolver over there. Ah, this is a Smith & Wesson Model 19-3 that, that we have plated with NP3. And what's really interesting about this is that we've never done a trigger job on this. What we did is we plated the internal, the outside, which is all, this is all NP3, and the internals. And then because it's been one of our show guns where people look at it and they'll dry fire it, that after I don't know how many thousands of, of times people dry fired, feel that trigger. And that is one smooth revolver. Yeah. And you say you never done anything to this? We never did a trigger job on it. It's just that MP3 on MP3 over time, people, you know, just pressing the trigger, everything just wore in and just super smooth. Wow. Now, of course, if you know if someone wants that trigger, you know, uh, when they when they send us their gun and they want that trigger, well, then we have to do a trigger job. Oh, sure. Because it's not going to happen right away. You know? No, that's it's not going to happen. That's after thousands and thousands of trigger people, pulls. Yeah. You know, pressing the trigger on it. Well, I don't know where to start because I want all of these uh, <laughs> now, but I know it won't happen. But uh, yeah. we we do appreciate everything you've shown us here and all the guns. So. If, Folks, if you're looking for a high quality pistol, or basically you can buy some of these are available for sale, right? Yes, yes. So all, all these are available for sale, but if you're looking to either purchase a new custom pistol with all these features or send your pistol in, Correct. so your gunsmith can either do a grip reduction or a trigger job or refinish and all that, you do all that in here. We do all of that in-house. Well, yeah, we're one of the largest custom gun shops in the country. I know my second generation Glock 19 has NP3 finish that is over 10 years old. Yes. And the only thing I need to do to it is get a little metal uh, polish yeah. and you know clean it up and that's ready to go. So folks, thank you for watching. Thank you, Freddie, for being here with us. Thank and you, thank you for showing us your shop. And stay tuned for more great things coming from Rollbar here in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patron.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.